So the iPhone 16 Pro camera is honestly a bit lackluster, but not for the reason you think. Sure, it does have some impressive tech, but there are just a few things that are holding it back. So in this video, I'm gonna show you why the iPhone 16 Pro camera is not so great out of the box and how you can fix that. By the way, uh, we're filming in a hurricane, so we'll see how this goes. This video is brought to you by Artlist. More on them a bit later. So in this video, we're gonna be diving into the brand new iPhone 16 Pro camera features, comparing it to my iPhone 15 Pro, and we're going to be showing you just a few simple tweaks that you can make to the new camera to turn it from frustrating into pretty fantastic. So let's cover some of the basics with the iPhone 16 Pro. First off, it's featuring the exact same design as about the last three iPhones, which is honestly fine. I do enjoy this design, but it would have been nice to see a refresh. It does have a 48 megapixel camera sensor, a brand new 5X telephoto lens on the Pro model, which is much appreciated. I did feel a little bit left out since the Pro Max had the 5X before instead of just the Pro. And also the ultra wide camera got an update. So now it features that 48 megapixel sensor as well, which is great. But if I'm being completely honest, I'm not sure that these upgrades for the iPhone 16 Pro are really that worth it if you're coming from a 14 or a 15. They are nice, but they just don't seem quite so next gen. But we'll dive a bit more into it and you can decide for yourself. Let's kick this off with the default camera on the iPhone 16 Pro. And you might find when you just take it out of the box and start taking photos that you might be getting subpar results. I find that Apple's auto settings and algorithms tend to over process the images, which can lead to blown out highlights in this weird HDR look to a lot of your images. It's not all the time, but it's definitely enough to be annoying. And sadly, from everything I've seen, the iPhone 16 Pro seems to be even more aggressive than its predecessor, the iPhone 15 Pro. But luckily, we can fix that. I'm gonna quickly break down how you can tweak the settings to get much better results. So let me show you how to bypass a lot of Apple's auto settings. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna hit the camera button here, swipe down to reveal the different options that we have. So we have tone, styles, cameras, zoom, depth, and exposure. We're gonna go ahead and start with exposure, so just click on that. And I find that Apple tends to overexpose all your images, so I personally like to bring my exposure down to, say, negative 0.3 to negative 0.7 EV. Just kind of depends on your scene. I think I tend to leave it on 0.7. Now let me go ahead and show you quickly how you can preserve that setting so you don't have to change it every single time, which can get pretty annoying. So if you actually just open up your settings app, you can go into the camera settings, scroll down to preserve settings, tap on that. And from here, you can check mark a ton of different things. So if I scroll down, you can see exposure to adjustment. So I'll just go ahead and scroll through here so you can see all the different things that I personally have checked to preserve on my camera, just so that you don't have to go through each setting for yourself. Okay, guys, we're gonna take a quick break so that I can tell you about Artless amazing new opportunity, especially for you guys. So they're gonna be giving away $100,000 to one creator to create their dream project. That's right, $100,000 to bring your wildest, most ambitious idea to life. Imagine what you could do with that. Maybe you've always wanted to shoot a documentary following researchers in Antarctica, capturing the stark beauty and hidden dangers of one of the most remote places on Earth. Or maybe launching that YouTube series that you've always been dreaming about but never had the funds for. All you have to do is upload up to a 90-second pitch video explaining your project on your social media and use hashtag Artlist100KFund. And they're not even requiring that you're subscribed to Artlist to enter. Just have a creative idea and you could win. And guys, that deadline's coming up pretty quick, so make sure you go ahead and get those videos uploaded. There'll be a link in the description so that you can learn more. Good luck. So just to go ahead and go through every single look that Apple has added, if you just half press on the shutter, you got cool rose, we got neutral, rose gold, gold, amber, standard, vibrant, we got natural, luminous, dramatic, quiet, cozy, ethereal, muted black and white, and stark black and white, which this one actually looks pretty cool. Now guys, I will say that as I'm scrubbing through these different picture profiles, I don't love how this feels. I don't really like that half press. I don't, I don't like scrubbing through them. I feel like I go past the one that I want often, or it's really hard to get exact move. I don't know, there's something about this. I definitely feel like they could update this as people complain and they realize, oh, we need to you know, change the sensitivity. They could fix that, but right now, something about it, I don't like it. And now that we've gone through all of these different Apple looks, you can see that they look honestly pretty 
bad. I think my favorite one is the black and white one, but that one has no color in it. So now let's go ahead and dive into the deeper HDR settings of these different looks so that hopefully we can actually make them look pretty decent. So Apple has introduced this new tone mapping feature for all of the picture profiles, including the standard look on the iPhone 16 Pro. And it's not the most in-depth thing, but there is some aspects to it. So basically left to right, we have saturation or color intensity, and then up and down, we have actual contrast controls, which is pretty great. Personally, I have found that Apple is absolutely terrified of contrast. They love to boost all of the shadows and make things look a little bit goofy. And I think that's that HDR look that we all are like, mm, Apple, I don't, I don't really know what we're going for here. So, so in here, you can go into each individual color profile and tweak them to make them look actually pretty decent. The one that I don't absolutely hate is amber. I feel like it adds just a nice little bit of warmth into the image, and then you can adjust the contrast levels to actually get something that's relatively pleasing. All that being said, with the iPhone 16 Pro, I really do recommend that you try out Pro Photo Mode if you're not afraid of a bit of post-processing. I have found that the raw photos taken from my iPhone edit kind of amazingly in Lightroom. It's definitely a bit more of a hassle, and the file sizes are much larger, but you will get much better better image results if you choose to do that. By the way, guys, I don't know if this will translate well. It probably will. Can you even tell which one's the iPhone 16, which one's the iPhone 15? So we have the one in my left hand and the one in my right hand. Go ahead and let me know in the comments which one do you think is which camera. Honestly, they look exactly the same to me. So I went ahead and took a picture of David using both the 15 and the 16 camera just to see how they were processing differently. And they do process differently, although it is very subtle if we're being, again, completely honest. I think that the actual skin processing is pretty much the same. There's an algorithm in there that detects the human and then cuts them out and processes them differently than everything else. But if you look at the pillars in the background, I do think that the iPhone 15 Pro has a bit more detail in it and the highlights are a little less blown out than on the 16. Again, with the tone mapping, that's something that you can actually fix with the 16, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, the difference is real subtle. Now, one of the cool things is a lot of these things that I'm showing you guys like the exposure compensation that can be actually applied in older generation iPhones. So even if you don't own an iPhone 16 Pro, you can apply some of the things you learned in this video to your iPhone 15, 14, 13, go on. But is the iPhone 16 Pro camera worth it? Ah, I don't really think so. <laughs> I think that if you own an iPhone 14 or an iPhone 15, there's not too much going on here that it makes it worth it. I do think maybe if you own a 14, getting either a 15 or a 16 could be good because you get Apple Log, something the 14 just doesn't have. But I don't really think there's anything about the iPhone 16 Pro camera that truly makes it worth it. I think there's plenty of other things that you can buy with the cost that this thing is. In fact, you could potentially buy this camera right here. I think that this is a relatively comparable in price camera that performs exceptionally well. Yeah, so that's the whole video. I hope that you all enjoyed. Uh, this is the iPhone 16 Pro. I'm not sure it's worth it, but I'll have a lot more videos on it out soon. So if you wanna see those, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I hope you all have a fantastic week and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, guys.